Calipers confuse a lot of woodworkers. They know they can be useful tools, but they have difficulty reading them because woodworkers tend to think in terms of the graduations on their other tools and rulers. In the US, that means down to like the 16th, maybe the 32nd, whereas many calipers measure in tenths, thousandths, and ten thousandths. Unless you understand machinist scales, these can seem like a foreign language to you. Take this traditional dial caliper, for example. There are 100 graduations on the dial, and it says .001 inches. I've handed this to some woodworkers, and they assume that one time around the dial is an inch. That .001 may look like 100 written backwards, but it means each of those little graduations are one thousandth of an inch. So one time around the dial is just one tenth of an inch. That means if you're measuring anything of any real size, that dial is going to spin faster than you can count the revolutions. So you have to use the scale that's written on the bar. That will get you to the nearest tenth of an inch, and then the dial breaks it down when you add the two together to get something like one and fifteen thousandths of an inch. Even though we say these measurements in fractions, one and fifteen thousandths, this is really considered a decimal scale because decimal means tenth. Decimal scales are a more precise scale for the demands of machinists and other industries that work in finer measurements than typical woodworkers. In woodworking, we don't usually measure things in decimals or tenths of an inch. So if a woodworker who's not used to this type of scale tries to use this caliper to measure a tenon that's, say, 7 sixteenths of an inch thick, it's going to be lost. Again, if you work with machinist tools a lot, you may have no problem converting in your head. But if you're the typical hobbyist woodworker, I recommend calipers that are made more for woodworkers. They come in both digital and dial form and typically read in both fractions and decimals, so they're useful for woodworkers as well as machinists. The digital versions also measure in millimeters for those who prefer the metric system. More on that later. There are different types available though, and each has its own pros and cons. Let's start with the dial calipers. These are nice because they don't require batteries, so you know they're going to be ready at a moment's notice, even if they've been in the drawer for two years. Notice this one does have a machinist scale, in decimals, or tenths of an inch, on top of the bar. And inside the green area of the dial, you have your tenths as well. So you can use these to measure very precisely if you like. But more handy in many woodworking situations is the lower scale on the bar, which is in eighths of an inch, and the dial, which is in sixty-fourths, with labels for the larger fractions that American woodworkers are used to. By the way, this is usually the point in the video where our international viewers rush to the comment section to call all of us Americans idiots for not using the metric system, but please indulge me for a few minutes because I'll get to you fine people shortly. So let's say you have a mortise that's just short of two inches wide. I can use the dial to see how much wider than two inches it is. In this case, 15 sixteenths. If I cut a tenon to match that perfectly, it's going to be too tight, especially if I add glue. So maybe I want to reduce the size by about a 64th or a 32nd. Those are fractions that we US woodworkers are used to, and it helps to have a caliper scale that matches. Now let's talk digital calipers. Digital calipers have more features than dial calipers, which I'll get to in a moment. They also measure in finer increments than the sixty-fourths or tenths you get from the analog dial. That makes these useful for the times when you do want machinist level accuracy. In fact, these typically feature multiple scales, including decimals, fractions, and millimeters. They're easy to read for those with poor eyesight, and the full measurement is displayed on the screen, so you don't have to add the scale on the bar to the scale on the dial as you would in non-digital models. The downside is they require batteries, and batteries tend to drain over time, especially if you leave them in the caliper. Three volt batteries are cheap, like 15 or 20 cents each if you buy them in quantity, and since all the calipers I use have an auto shutoff feature, they seem to last six months to a year for me. But if you only use your caliper once a year, I recommend you take the battery out before you put it away so it won't be dead when you need it. Digital calipers come with different features, and it's important you understand what you're getting before you buy one. This is a basic model. It reads in decimals down to half a thousandth of an inch, in millimeters, and in fractions as fine as one one hundred twenty-eighth of an inch. Now as woodworkers, we don't use fractions that fine. 
That makes this model a little frustrating at times because while it will display the smallest denominator automatically, showing 3 quarters instead of 32 128 for example, it doesn't round up or down. So something very slightly larger than 3 quarters is going to show as 33 128 and you're going to be trying to round that up or down to see what the nearest number you're familiar with is, and that can get frustrating. So with these calipers, I sometimes just work in millimeters. I can hear an audible cheer from our metric friends overseas when I say that. But I often use a caliper to compare two sizes, such as a mortise and a tenon, so it doesn't matter what scale I'm using in those cases. And while the decimal scale includes four digits after the decimal point, the metric scale only shows two digits after the point, which simplifies things when I don't really need accuracy down to half a thou. But now you metric folks are asking why I don't use metric scales all the time. It's because it doesn't match the scales on my other tools, so it's not handy in other circumstances. For example, if I'm using these to try to find out how wide a router bit is, or a drill bit that doesn't have legible markings on it, I need those fractions. It's the world we live in, there's no sense in debating it. Of course, since I live in a world of fractions, it would be nice if I had a caliper that made it easier to stick to that scale alone. And they do make models with the ability to auto round off fractions so you don't get crazy numbers like 3328. This one lets you switch between 128 when you want that kind of accuracy and a much more manageable 30 seconds which is far handier for woodworking tolerances. I love that feature. And with these, I never use millimeters. Sorry if that offends Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, Africa, and half of North America. They make these calipers with next level technology too, like these with Bluetooth built in so you can sync and save your measurements with apps on your phone. That's a handy feature, but you can't switch between 30 seconds and 128 like you can with these and I just love that feature too much to give it up. One more feature to consider in your digital calipers is if it includes an origin sensor. That means you won't lose your sensor position if you turn it off and then move the jaws while the caliper is off. When you turn it back on, it will read the actual location of the jaws at that time, rather than assuming that it never moved and giving a false reading that you'll have to zero out and start again. So, as a woodworker, which caliper would I choose? I'd own two sets. I'd have the dial caliper, which I know will be ready at a moment's notice, and with a scale in 60 fourths that's fast to read in woodworking terms and accurate enough for most woodworking tasks. I'd also have a digital caliper that I keep with the battery out until I need it for more accurate measurements, such as in decimals or millimeters. But I would also make sure that it can be set to round fractions down to the 32nd if I like, and I'm a big fan of that origin feature. If I could have only one caliper, it would be the digital Fastener Cal model, which is like 28 bucks, so the price is right too. One more thing, people see these eye gauging calipers I use and they wonder if something that doesn't cost much compared to other high end calipers can be as accurate. So let's measure a feeler gauge and see if the two match. This gauge says it should be 0.25 inches thick, and the caliper agrees. Now that's accurate to the thousandth of an inch, so let's go finer. This gauge says it's 0 0.0015, and again, the caliper agrees. So these are accurate down to half a thousandth of an inch. I say that's good enough for metalworking, woodworking, pretty much anything else. I'll link to these in the description below so you can check them out. I hope this simplifies things for woodworkers who may have rejected calipers as mystery tools in the past, because with the right pair, you may find a million uses for them in your shop. Digital tools make woodworking easier and more precise, and they aren't as expensive as they used to be, at least not at the Craftsman Gallery. They have a full range of eye gauging digital tools for every type of woodworking task, and by supporting them, you're also supporting us. So please use the link below this video to check them out today. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.